Hey, hello friends. Welcome to my channel, SAPSD and ABAP League Support. One of my friend requested that how should we know based on which field the value getting populated in the segments of the IDAX. So for example, in the segment even EDK14, Okay, let me go to another segment. Even it is zero one. We have we can see some uh, field here, and we can see relevant values for that field. The currency, EUR, and uh, Z term means payment terms, right? Triple zero one. Like this, we have some fields are there, and the system populating this data for each and every field in the segments. Okay, so my friend wants to know how this field values are getting updated. From which table is referring? Okay, let's check this one today. Okay, so what are the segments we see in IDAC? It's nothing but an one structure. So, for example, even EDK01. If I open that even EDK01, you see that will be in a structure. If I go to SC11 and even EDK. 01 you see we can see several field here we have 32 fields here in this structure so these structure only later added to we 30 either in the extension or in the basic type level and here we can see that same segment even edk14 has four different qualifiers w06 w07 w08 and 012 segment is name but uh, it's identified with seg qualifier now here so w06 referring to some field values and uh, w07 referring to something else same with w08 so if you want to see that there are two ways that we can see how this qualifier are uh, determined and how what does it mean if i double click on this uh, small icon and you see the qualifier here you can see f4 help click this f4 here you can see each and every description of the qualifiers so the qualifier w6 means is a division if i show you the same thing in uh, sc11 so even edk 14 display this remember that it is coming from the domain level in the domain level we will be maintaining the value ranges so double click on this component type for the first field qualifier and again double click on the domain edi qualifier f4 and you see one tab value range click this one and you see the value here so it's def defined here so as it is defined here, accordingly, it's coming in the IDAC as well. So if I scroll down, I can see all the different uh, meaning for the qualifiers. Okay, fine. Now let's see how the values getting filled to these segments for the each and every field in the segment level. So for example, I am referring to the IDAC that is order acknowledgement IDAC. It's an outbound IDAC. The message type is ORDR SP. So let me show you that. You see, the message type is ORDR SP. It's an outbound IDAC. And it's very easy to remember the relevant IDAC for this. Sorry, out, uh, easy to remember the function model for this IDACs. The basic terminology is that idac underscore if it is in outbound then add output if it's an incoming idac then add input then underscore then at the end add the message type so this is in a free defined way of determining the functional model in the code level okay similar way if i want to see that uh, invoice output idac means simply change that uh, message type to invoice in vyc if i display means it will display yeah 
So like this, we can easily remember the function model for the relevant IDAX. This is type wise. Okay, let me open that uh, order acknowledgement function model and let's see how the values are getting filled to the field level. Okay, let me page down. So in the function model, there is one perform called to fill the each and every segments. And you see here the perform line number 218 fill IDAC int tab. If I double click on this perform, we can see several, again, some other performs are here. So each and every perform is related to one segment to fill the data. The name itself, we can understand this perform is going to do update which segment. The first one is E1 EDK01. So let me double click on this one. So in the IDAC, what we see in this uh, E1 EDK01, we can see several fields here. Currency, WKURS, payment terms, order number, right, and VSA, RT, and KZDSZU. I think it's an order combination, right? So like this, we have so many fields are here. And so here you can see that And you see XVBAK work is a currency. In the VBAK table level, one field called currency, document currency, WAERK. So that value only getting updated to the even decay 0 1 CURCY currency field. Right? And similar way, exchange rate KURST. This is coming from the one structure XHVBKD. I think this will be available in the VBKD database table level. So it's coming from KURST. That is filling to this field. Even to K01 WKURS. Right? And uh, same thing that the pricing date, the PRSDT. Okay. This is also getting popularity here. And you see the payment terms, G term. G term also getting filled from the structure X H V B K D. And you might ask, so where the structure getting filled initially? Initially. That means definitely it's coming from the database table only. So all the relevant database table for the order, like uh, VBEP, VBAK, VBAP, VBKD, VBPA. Every order database tables will be called initially. Okay. Then those values will be filled to the structures. Okay. And you can see the PO type here. It's coming from VBAK, BSA, RT. So indirectly, every field is referring to the database table only. But if you want to accurately know the logic means, we should go through the program only and understand how the particular field is getting filled. But 90% of the time, it will referring to the database tables only. But we don't see that uh, uh, direct table here like VBAK, VBAP, but we can see the structure for the tables, XVBAK, XVBEP, and we see XHVBKD. So indirectly referring to the database table only here. Right. So like this, each and every segment will be filled here. And you see that even at 14, in even at 14 also, we have different qualifiers out there. Right. And you see the qualifier wise, it's updating their values. SPRT. So W6 means division, right. And the division value coming from that VBAK, XVBAK structure values coming. Right. So like this and coming W07 is a distribution channel. In a way, we will get all the data from the structures and tables even initially it was referring to the database table only and if we check that uh, another okay i am going to open the another function model that is relevant to invoice outbound IDAC. same thing IDAC underscore output underscore invoice i n v o i c 
display it so every outbound idoc has one perform it's nothing but subroutine that perform will be called to fill each and every segment data based on some tables or structures if i scroll down there is a one uh, perform available here also uh, you see here the perform in line number 137 full len idoc into tab so this is in german language that's why it is like this fine so if i double click on this perform you see here you, we have some other performs are there to fill each and every segment and if i go to that uh, first perform fill e1 edk01 so here i can see the data is filling to that uh, segment field wise from the structure vb dkr okay so vb dkr is nothing but header document view and vb dpr is item document view so it is a structure only but initially the structure data filled from the database table only initially okay so like this every segment is getting populated from that indirectly from the database table only and if we want to add any custom logics like i want to manipulate i want to i don't want the system to get the values as standard behavior i want to get a different value anyways it's not in a different value i i want this value because it's a client requirement i want to get the different value as per the client requirement i want deviate from the standard behavior means then you see here everywhere we see one uh, perform call customer function you see here sorry customer function this is the one perform so this we are in the perform of filling e1 dk 01 segment so at the end of this form we have one more function model where we can add the custom logic so if i double click here you see the customer function is 002 if i double click here you see it's a custom exit customer exit it's in free defined user space provided by sap to add our custom logics in case of an upgrade happening in the system this this code won't erase it will be still like this only that's the advantage of an user exit versus customer customer exits so user exit might be it might impact it has some impact whenever the upgrade patch upgrade takes place but customer exit means there is no problem at all it will be there like this because it's an user defined it's an sap divide, defined space for the user to add their custom requirements so like this we can see n number of customer functions available to add our custom logic so it's very simple to identify the program where we can add our custom logic in case of idax simply search call customer function open the function model then search this customer function you will get n number of customer exits so like this only every field in the segments in the idac will be getting populated okay that's it from this video friend hope this video will be very helpful to you we can catch up in the next video bye for now